Now today, we're going to do this one on money. All right? Y'all ready? I'm going to be smart. And here, I'm going to say it on the get-go right here. If you'll listen today, if you'll listen today, you'll put these principles into action for the next five years, you'll want to buy me a boat or a car in about five years because you're going to do so good. Amen? No. No, anyway, the point is, if you'll put these, things, these principles into action today, be smart when it comes to money. I call it money smarts. Let's go, Rog, with the message today. Money smarts. Don't you want some money smarts, say? That's country talk. I want some money smarts so that I can be wise in my finances. I want to be over my finances, not my finances over me. Amen? I want to be a servant. The Bible, Jesus said, you know, no man can serve God and mammon or money. Somebody's going to rule you. Why don't you be the one in charge, amen? Instead, over your money, instead of money in charge of you. So let's go with the message today. All of this comes right from the book of Proverbs. I could have, we could have gone on for two, three weeks on this stuff, but we're going to nail it down in one week today. Let's look at it. Here we go. When it comes to finances, we can be intelligent and we can make good decisions, or we can be foolish and make bad decisions. Let's go ahead and testify. How many here in your life, you've been really foolish sometimes with money and made some bad decisions? Okay? That's going to be all of us most likely. Okay? It is your choice. I want this church to be blessed. I want you to make good decisions. I want you to be smart this year when it comes to managing your money. Keep looking. The book of Proverbs speaks repeatedly of two kinds of people. When you read the book of Proverbs, even though it might call them by different names, it's really nailed, it's narrowed down just to two types of folks. All right, here they are. The first is the righteous, diligent, and the wise person. The, the righteous, the diligent, and the wise person. That's one kind of person. That's the same. All three of those are the same. And then you'll also see the wicked, lazy fool. That's pretty much it. When you read the book of Proverbs, it said, the fool did it, the righteous did it, the righteous did it, the fool did this. You see what I'm saying? So it's broken down pretty simple for us. Let's take it a step further. The righteous is satisfied. You'll see that in the book of Proverbs. The diligent is successful, and finally, the wise is secure. If you follow it through and you just read the book of Proverbs, this will be a pattern that happens time and time again. You'll also see this. You'll see the wicked is selfish, cares about himself. You'll see the lazy is sorry as the day is long, man. That's how we call it in Carolina. If somebody's lazy, we call them sorry. Y'all ever say that or no? That person is just what? Sorry. Not like I'm sorry. I mean sorry. I had a boss, man, when I first started working, I was 16, and uh, I worked at uh, waste management in the parts department as a 16-year-old. That wasn't my first job. first one was uh, doing dishes and washing dishes when I was 14. Before that, I helped my mama clean the tables as a waitress. I mean, so I've always worked and loved work. However, my first real job, you know what I'm saying, was waste management in the parts department back in Carolina, and I worked for this man. And, buddy, he did not mind telling me, Clark, you are sorry. <laughs> he would do that. He also went to church with us, and I did a bus route with him and stuff like that and, and, and did junior church and reached Boys and Girls for Christ. So he and I got really close, but he did not mind looking me in the eyeball saying, you are sorry, boy. you just sorry. Well, it's sort of stuck, amen? So the lazy, you'll see it, just sorry. You'll see the fool, stupid, stupid, stupid. Some people, when it comes to money, they are just stupid, all right? I know that's ugly, but it's true, amen? <laughs> it's the truth. So let's look now. Which one do you want to be? Which one do you want to be? It's up to you today. Well, I can't, you don't understand my circumstance. Listen to me. You can change. Say, I can change. I can change. You do not have to be ignorant when it comes to money your whole life and let money rule over you. You can rule over your money, and you can make good decisions. Let's keep looking. Remember, smart has two basic meanings. When we started this series, smart start. Smart has two basic meanings. Smart doesn't just mean intelligent. It also means this, stingingly painful. You said that before? Say that guy's smart. Or you might say, man, that smarts. Ouch. That's what it means. So what kind of money smarts do you have? You want to live this year and the rest of your life making intelligent decisions when it comes to money? Or do you want to, when it comes to money, to keep living life from here on out being hurt by money and being controlled by money 
and being in agony. How many have ever been in agony over money before? I mean, you just didn't have enough of it or whatever. You got deals going, and it's just crazy, man. Well, God doesn't want that for your life. He wants you to have some serious money smarts. And by the way, if you're visiting today or something like that, I tend to talk loud and stuff like that, so I'm sorry. I saw a couple of you go like that. So, But don't turn me down too much, brother, because I want to be able to be heard. Amen? So come on. Here we go. Let's look at the Bible real quick. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways, consider that ant, and be wise, which having no guide, no overseer, no ruler, provides her meat in the summer. She gathers her food in harvest. How long will you sleep, old sluggard? When will you arise out of your sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thou want as an armed man. Don't want to say a lot about that passage. I just want to get into where we're going. Did you see the difference say? You got the wise little ant. You got the foolish sluggard. Amen? And the sluggard, that's like somebody that's traveling in a bad part of town, <laughs> and they get robbed at gunpoint. That's what happens. You're going to lose everything you have. If you're not wise, you're not going to live life successfully financially if you're not like that ant, if you're like that slugger. That's what the Bible says. So let's go down. Let's see what the Bible says. Money smart. It's got several things today, and we're going to try to keep it simple. Which smart will you be concerning money? Which smart will you all? You all right today out there? Y'all good? Which smart will you be when it comes to money? Righteous? Wicked? Wise? Fool? Diligent? Lazy? Which one are you going to be? Why don't we make some decisions today? And we might think, well, how can God? God ain't interested in this. God is. This is, is this the Bible or what? Say. Jesus talked more about money, even though we're not going to look at a lot of what Jesus said today. He talked more about money than any other subject. Any other subject, he talked more about money. It's crazy. Book of Proverbs, probably the number one topic in the book of Proverbs is money. So God knows it really matters. You just really can't live down here without it. It's really important. So let's see. Money smarts. Would you say these two statements with me? I want to be intelligent when it comes to money. Now you need to help me again if you really mean it. Come on. I want to be intelligent when it comes to money. Say this one with me. I want to be satisfied, successful, and secure. That's my goal today, to help you through God's Word to let's move us down that path. If you want to have some serious money smarts, you've got to say yes to some things, and you've got to say no to some things. That's how we're going to build this message today. Yes to some things, and I've got to say no to some things. I guarantee it. If you say yes to some things and no to some things, you're going to be successful. This ain't no positive power thinking thing. That's not one, this is the Bible. This works, man. As a matter of fact, we could get we got many successful businessmen and women in this building today. And I guarantee it, they'll come up after this message. If you don't believe it, and they'll, they'll, they'll testify that what we're going to say from the Word of God is true today. Okay? So let's go now and see what we can find. We've got to say yes to some things. Can you say that with me? A little loud with me. Come on. Say yes. yes. Come on. There we go. Here we go. Say yes. Yes. Here we go. Here we go. Say it with me. Yes, I will be teachable. If you're here today and your mind is made up, I'm just always going to be stupid when it comes to money. Or I know it all. I'm the man. Listen, I certainly don't know it all. got all kinds of problems. made all kinds of mistakes when it comes to money. But the bottom line is we need to be teachable. Let's look at what the Bible says. Several things when we're talking about being teachable. Receive God's instruction. Proverbs 8, 10, and 11. Receive my instruction, and not silver, knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than what? Rubies. And the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Number one, we've got to receive God's instruction. What does that mean? If God says it about money, believe Him. Does that make sense? If God says it about money, believe Him. Who are you anyway to argue with God, who is God? If God says it, be teachable. Instead of saying, well, I don't like that, that, like that. Fine, have it your way. 
Listen, be teachable. God says it, except that he knows more than you do about the money. So be teachable, okay? So listen to him. Number two, regard reproof. Look at it. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction. But he that regards reproof shall be what? Honored. What does that mean? That means if you're doing something a certain way with your finances, and you find out from God's word that you're doing it the wrong way, instead of arguing with him, or if somebody points it out, a financial counselor, or even from the platform today, if I say something that you go, well, I don't like, but if it's the word of God, regard reproof. Take it today, amen? By the way, it's something really aggravating. If somebody works for you, maybe you've been there before, somebody, you hire somebody and they, and they work for you, and you try to teach them, do this, do that, this is what I expect out of you, and they don't do it. Is that aggravating or what? Say, that's aggravating, man. Regard reproof, if in your job, we didn't do it that way. Well, you don't work there anymore, I guess. We're used to, you're working here now. Amen? Regard reproof or get another job. Regard reproof. Somebody tells you something, they have a business. I'm not talking about doing something illegal or anything. I'm talking about they want, they want you to do it the way it ought to be done. God wants you to do it the way it ought to be done. Regard reproof. Number three, realize where your financial blessings come from. Realize where the money you have, the blessings that you have come from. Houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers. Interesting verse, a prudent wife is from the Lord. This means a wife that is wise in finances and handling the finances of the home, that's a gift from God, amen? And so basically God is saying when it comes to your finances, when it comes to your wisdom, when it comes to your smarts and things like that, realize that's a gift from God. And realize all these blessings that I have come from him. So first of all, I've got to be teachable. So say yes, I've got to be teachable. I will be teachable. Number two, hang in here with me. I know this ain't a rip-roaring message today, but anyway, if you come out of here doing better with your finances, I'll be glad. I think you'll be glad you listened. Amen? Yes, I'll be diligent. Say that with me. Yes, I will be diligent. What's that mean? Let's look at it. Number one, working hard pays. Diligent means working hard. All right? If you want, oh, I want to have money, and I want to manage money, and I want to have a lot of money, but if you are lazy and you're not going to work hard, good chance you ain't going to have it. Amen? Work hard. That's what the Bible says. He says this to the righteous person. It's righteous to work hard. He becomes poor that deals with a slack hand, doesn't do a good job, doesn't work hard, but the hand of the diligent makes what? Well, I don't like them rich people. They got all that money. Have you ever thought that maybe they worked? Say, come on, work. We live in America, man. You can, make your, you, can, you can have a tremendous life here in this country if you'll work hard. All kinds of opportunities. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. All right? That old ox, if he keeps working, my friend, it's going to be a good thing. You keep working. Work hard. The Bible says be diligent. Number two, working steadily satisfies. There's just something about work. Look at this. He that tills his land shall be what? Satisfied with bread. But he that follows vain persons is void of understanding. Listen, you need to work steady. Well, I don't like that job. I want to get me another job. And you work at that job. I don't like that job. Get me another job. I don't like that job. I'm not going to get me another job. Why don't you just till the land? Get behind the tiller, man. <laughs> Stay with it. Stay steady. It's amazing how many fellows stayed steady, and after about 20, 30 years, they owned the farm. Amen? Because they stayed steady. They stayed steady. Instead of hopping here, hopping there, hopping here, hopping, be steady. Working steady satisfies. There's something satisfying about working hard. Do you agree with that? Yes or no? I got all kinds of stories, but I got to keep moving. Be diligent. Working brings increase. By the way, what am I learning in this message? Hmm... If I don't work, I probably ain't going to have it. Isn't that what we're seeing today or what? That's what we're seeing. Working brings increase. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. But he that gathers by labor shall increase. It's interesting. They've done all kinds of studies on people that win the lottery. Usually their life is a wreck. We had a guy here in Inglewood won the lottery years and years and years ago, built this big old fancy house on the water. Gigantic thing. Lost everything. Lost the house, lost everything. Now you ride by in the boat and go, that's where that guy used to live that won the lottery. 
Working steadily pays. Working brings increase. Instead of trying to find it some other way, work is the way we do it. I'll be diligent. The sluggard will not plow by the reason of the cold. It's too cold. Therefore shall he beg in the harvest and he won't have anything. That's what God's Word says. It's too cold. Excuse making. If you're sick, guess what? Get up and go to work. Can you say that? If you're sick, get up and go to work. I'm not talking about if you're like deathly ill, but how many have ever gone to work when you had a cold? Come on. I know I'm going to get letters and stuff from nurses on this one and doctors. (laughs) Well, guess what? If you've got a family to feed, you have to do it, don't you say? Come on. I'm just saying little aches and pains, man. Get up. Working brings increase. Working, look at this, leads to honor. Proverbs 22, 29. See thou a man diligent in his business? He'll stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men or base men. He will stand before kings. It's amazing how some folks... Oh, how many what you watch the uh, State of the Union address recently? And President Bush, he points over there, you know, different folks. Serviceman a fellow that saved somebody uh, from a, a train. Remember that? Just regular folk doing something that's right. Amen? You Look, working hard pays. It'll bring you honor. If you work hard, people will respect you. You might not have everything everybody else has, but if you've got respect, you've got food on your table, clothes on your back, and you haven't gotten it because you're dishonest, that's a good thing, man. And you'll be honored for that. Keep looking. Work is my friend. Say that with me. Work is my friend. Wonder who said that. Yeah, pop her up. There she is, my wife. There she is. Our most hated statement at the Clark House. Work is your friend. Yeah, right. You know, it's the truth. My son, just he's in college, and he's just got a job. He had one job, and it was hit and miss, hit and miss, hit and miss. It's interesting. He's got a job now where he's required to be there, he's required to do this, this, that, the other. They've been encouraging him. Boy, you're doing a good job. And his whole attitude has changed. His whole attitude has changed. He called him. He's got a better attitude. You call him and he's feeling good about it. Oh, I did this, I did that. And used to, if it was regarding work, it was like, oh my gosh. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) But that's just teenagers. That happens a lot of times. Work is your friend. Instead of sitting around idle all the time, do something productive. That's what the Bible says. Keep looking. Say, yes, I will be honest. If you're dishonest in your business, I hope you feel horrible about right now. Amen? You need to change that. You need to change that. That's not honoring God. Honest work. When you work, do honest work. The labor of the righteousness tends to life, the fruit of the wicked to sin. You work. It's the right thing to do. You do it honestly. That brings life. The other is just wrong. It's horrible. Don't be dishonest. It leads to sin, other kinds of sin. Honest wage. Get your money in an honest way. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. Amen? Well, if I cut this corner, I turn this, and I, I do this, and I'm sneaky here, and I'm that there, I can make more money. Just, why don't you just get an honest wage? Amen? Do it honestly. Just because you can take advantage of somebody doesn't mean you should. Amen? Be honest in your wage. This is God's plan, by the way, if you don't have some money smarts. The getting of treasure by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. Be honest in your finances. Be honest when you deal with people. Be honest in your your work. If you do work for somebody, why gouge, people say? Nothing more disgusting than to see storms like we just had here in the state of Florida or the hurricanes and see people come in and gouge people. Don't you want to hit somebody like that up the head with a stick or something? Say gouging people when they ought to be there helping them and giving them the best possible price they probably could. They they gouge them. It's horrible. Be honest. Honest walk. The way that you conduct yourself in business. The way you walk before others. Better is the poor that walks in his integrity. Would you say integrity with me? Integrity. What does that mean? A firmness of character. I'm a person of character. If you got to be shady and a shyster, don't even go there. Take what you got and you feel good that you've you've got something by an honest day's work. Then he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. So better is the poor man. The desire of a man in his kindness is his his kindness, and a poor man is better than a what? Say it with me. I'd rather be poor than people go around saying, that boy's a liar right there. Amen? I'd rather have a little 
than to not have a good name. Keep looking. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Okay? This is God's plan. And by the way, he wrote the book on it. He's pretty good at it. Keep looking. So yes, the fourth thing, and our last yes is this. Say it with me. Yes, I will be. I'll be humble. Look at it. What am I talking about? Say that with me. God is, and I am not. Okay? So often money can make us think we're something really special. We treat people differently because they got money. Well, one day they're going to put him or her in a pine box or a fancy-looking casket, and they're going to be dead in a hammer just like the poor man. And we spend our life kowtowing to people because they got some money. We ought to treat up. Matter, matter of fact, the Bible condemns that kind of thinking. In the book of James, it says, You say to the rich man, sit over here. You say to the poor man, sit down here on my footstool. God says that's horrible. You know what God blesses? Humility. Even if you're better off than somebody else, you ain't him. God's God and you ain't. Amen? Remember that in your finances. Don't let it go to your head. Go crazy, man. Keep humble, man. The successful leaders in the book Good to Great and other great books on finance talk about the most successful leaders and companies are those leaders that are humble. Those leaders that when something is wrong in the company, they take the blame. They don't put it off on other people. They are the ones that are humble. They serve humbly. They don't get to be big shots, man. They still keep that, that great, humble attitude. Are you hearing me today? So how many work for somebody like that? Had a great spirit and you love working for them? Can I see your hand? Anybody like that left in America? I hope. Come on. That's the way we ought to be. God's God and I'm not. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Fear the Lord. Fall before him. Realize he's God and you're not, no matter what your income is. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that's broken down and without walls. Guard your spirit from getting proud and full of yourself. Stay humble. And stay humble all the way. Start out humble and stay humble all the way. Amen? And I believe some of you are going to really do well. You're going to do well in life. We've got young people, some young adults here today. And some of you are successfully retired. Listen, and God's bless you. Keep that humble spirit. Keep that humble spirit. Say that with me. God gets the credit and not me. Why don't you, I, I, I really would love to see what, somebody, what, what God could do with somebody in Fellowship Church that had that kind of attitude when it came to their money. I mean, a real attitude that says, you're getting all the credit for every single dime that I make. And I'm going to glorify you with everything that I have. You are getting all the credit, all the glory. You give me anything. You give me any ability. You're going to get the credit. You're going to get the glory. Don't you think God just might, mm, don't you think he might like that? Say, come on. I'm telling you, this is exciting, man. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he'll establish the border of the widow. He'll take care of a widow. He will establish even a widow. You might be here today thinking, I don't have anything, Pastor. How can I be successful in my finances? I don't have anything. Why don't you just start with what we're talking about today? Be teachable. Work hard. Be honest. Humble yourself before the Lord. You might just be surprised in five years where you are. Amen? God can take you places. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Say that with me. That's a great verse. By humility and the fear of the Lord, watch it, are riches, honor, and life. I think we just fall short so often. We, we, we leave something out. We ought to just fear Him and be humble before Him and want to serve Him. And be wise and be smart. Being smart doesn't mean you're going to give everything you got away. You're going to be smart, amen, with your finances. Let's keep looking. So let's say yes, yes. Here they are. Say them with me right quick. I will be teachable. I will be diligent. I will be honest. I will be humble. Now, wasn't that a great message? Wasn't that just fantastic? No, we're not done. Okay, you might think, well, I, 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 I. you got to say no to some stuff. You got to say no to some stuff. Yes, 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 yes. You do that all the time, you're going to be broke. It ain't about just saying yes, it's about saying no. Let's look at it. Here we go. To avoid the stingingly painful realities of mismanaged finances, you must be willing to say no to some things. And they're right in the Bible. And, Roger, we're going to pick up speed a little bit right here, buddy. Here we go. Say no. Here it is, right from the Bible, right from Proverbs. Say no, say it with me, to impulse buying. I heard more men on that one. 
What's up with that, guys? You hadn't said anything all service. Come on. Here we go. Listen. Proverbs 19, 2. Also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. Another verse. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, the hard worker, but everyone that is hasty only to want. Okay? You have got, if you're going to be really smart when it comes to money, you have got to say no to impulse buying. Okay? Well, they got a big sale on it. I say 50% fool. They done raised it before you got there. <laughs> How did they ever bought something like that? Yeah, I got that. And then you, then you got real smart and pulled all the tags off. Oh, my gosh. Come on. Say no to impulse buying. Can you tell there's a pet peeve of mine? Say no to impulse buying. I'm going to tell you right now how you can save 33%. You can save 33%. You ain't going to want to do it, some of you. You spend 33% more, usually in impulse buying, if you have a credit card. If you have to pay cash for it. It's funny how you just didn't need it quite as much, did you? Especially if you got lunch coming up and you know you or supper and you you know you got that money. Yeah, you got enough money for supper, but you know you ain't got enough money for them new shoes or that new shirt. You see what I'm saying? You'd save 33% more. If as a church, and we're not gonna do it, I'm not foolish to think we're all gonna do this. However, we would have no problem building that building in return to Florida totally debt free. So don't come crying to me about it. We'd spend 33% less. I mean, that's money that you just are spending. You could just stop that, that craziness, impulse buying, if you get con control of your credit card. Can I get an amen and an applause on that from a few people that might know? It's the truth. It's the truth. Now, here's what we did. Here's how the Clark family does it. We have a credit card. And so we pay off our credit card every single month. We don't pay a bit of interest. And isn't that just wonderful? But guess what? We're still spending 33 to 40% more because we just have the sucker. So if you're paying it off every month and you're feeling good about yourself because I pay it off every month, but wait a minute. If you really want to have money smarts, I'm talking about if you really want to be in control of your finances, not your finances in control of you, say no to impulse buying. You can, you, I can't do that. I couldn't get... Why can't you? Why not? If you say, I couldn't do that, there's no way I could do that, then who controls you? Say, your money controls you. I'm going to be ugly. If your money controls you, you're stupid. Can't believe the preacher said that. Let me tell you something. If you can't provide for your family, if you can't do the things you need to do, if you're always stressed out, if you're always worrying, if you can't give to God's work, listen to me, that's a foolish thing, my friend. God says, if you'll put me first, I'll bless you. I'll rebuke the devil for you. You will prosper. That's what God says. So to me, it's stupid, man, if I'm giving 33% more to these people. Doesn't make any sense to me. Let's look at a scripture. Come on. Say no to co-signing. Say that with me. Say no. Let's do a quick test. How many ever co-signed for somebody and you wished you hadn't now? How many ever co-signed? Oh, he kept his head up a long time right there. Lord, help him. He couldn't even get the arm down. <laughs> hey, listen. Listen. How many ever co-signed for somebody and it caused a, 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 a breach in that relationship? It caused some problems. See hands. Okay, there you go. There you go. That means obligating yourself to somebody else's debt. You don't even get the stuff. You're doing it for somebody else. It ain't even for you. Look. My son, if you be surety or co-sign for a friend, if you've stricken your hand with a stranger, watch it, Thou art snared with the words of your mouth. Thou art taken with the words of your mouth. Keep looking. Another verse. He that is surety for a stranger shall smart. Look, at there's the word. Look. Is that an intelligent or mean painful right there? Painful. Shall smart for it. And he that hates suretyship is what? If you hate co-signing for somebody, if you hate obligating yourself for somebody else's debt, that's wisdom. That's the right thing. Amen. If you want to give them the money, give them the money. Don't obligate yourself. The Bible says if, you will, if you'll strike the hand of a stranger. And a lot of people use that verse and say, no, I did it for my daughter. I did it for this. I know them. They're not a stranger. You miss what it's all talking about. Anytime you co-sign, you're not shaking hands with your daughter. 
you're shaking hands with somebody you don't even know. Did you hear me this morning? You're shaking hands with Wachovia man. <laughs> How many knows him? Okay? And I love Wachovia. We have our counselor and stuff like that. But bottom line is, friend, be smart. Say no. Well, they won't like me. Good. Why, why have I got to put myself in jeopardy for somebody to like me? Amen? Hey, you might be a whole lot better off. They want you to sign for $5,000. You give them $500. That'd be a whole lot cheaper, amen? And I ain't seen nobody yet that didn't like you if you give them $500. <laughs> amen? Just think it through. Come on. Say no. Number three, to excessive interest. I know this is no-brainer stuff. Let's do another test. How many in the building, just be honest, we're at church, we're together, we don't want to be phony. How many have paid excessive interest before? Sound like a lot of us. He that by usury, interest, and unjust gain increases his substance. Oh, it's a good way to make a lot of money. He shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. What's that verse mean? Here's what it means. When you pay excessive interest, listen to me. When you pay excessive interest, you're giving it to somebody who pities the poor. Now that sounds like, isn't that really nice? All those interest payments I paid to those people, they're giving it to the poor people. Use your brain. They're not giving it to the poor people. The idea there is they look down on the poor. They don't, not that they pity them, like, can I help you? You need some stuff? No, it's that I look down on you, and if I didn't pay the interest, I could help the poor. Did you get it? Say, if you pay interest, you're hurting yourself. You're also hurting others that you would have money to give to, to others. Are you hearing me today? Say, do you think the church of the living God and, and ministries suffer because a lot of the church today is just totally engulfed in interest? Yes or no? It's the truth. Okay? Okay. We hurt ourselves when we pay excessive interest. Say no to excessive interest. It was, I was listening to the radio the other day. A guy's paying 33% interest. He's got $5,000. That's all he owes is $5,000. But $5,000 and you're paying 33% interest, and he's got a car that's broke down. He doesn't hardly have any money to make his ends. He's in a hole that he can never get out of. And then you got all kinds of mental and emotional problems and crazy things happen, man. Say no, number four. Say no to get-rich-quick schemes. I'm not going to say any names. You got them in your mind already, don't you? Had a guy years ago, I was a young pastor. He came to me and wanted me to get in his little program because I'm a people person. And he wanted me to sell for him. And here's what I told him. I was a pastor. I said, I don't want somebody having to crawl over uh, laundry suds to get to Jesus. Amen? I don't know if that makes sense to you. I want to do what I do freely. I want you to be my friend because I'm a Christian, because I love the Lord, because I'm a preacher of the gospel. I don't want you to be my friend so because you can buy something from me. Are you hearing me today? That's, that's, I want that, I want, that's pure religion as far as I'm concerned. I know people have to make a living. I know people are in different, uh, different uh, marketing things. I understand that. Try to avoid them. Okay? How many ever gotten one of these little things? Wasn't that it was dishonest? You got in one of them, you really thought you were going to make a lot of money, and you didn't. Can I see your hand? Okay. That's a lot of hands that went up in this building. Try to say no to that. Okay, let's look at it. He that tills his land shall have plenty of bread, but he that follows after vain persons shall have poverty. So many of these schemes we get into or programs or plans, that person many times doesn't care about you. They're getting more people involved with what they're doing, and you'd be better off just keeping that job you got and working hard. Amen? Are you hearing me today? Keep tilling the land. Keep running that tiller, baby. And they're getting a lot of money over here. Let's see who wins in the end, say. Let's just see who wins in the end. I'm way behind right now. Well, I'm catching up. Oh my gosh, they just blew a tire. <laughs> you hearing me? Come on. We're almost done this morning. Number five, say no to neglect. Now watch it. Let's look at the Scripture. 
I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall was broken down. Then I saw, I considered it well, I looked upon it, and I received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thou won't as an armed man neglect. I'll tell you what happened to me. I just I bought a I had a boat, sold it. Not long, about a year ago. I actually made five hundred dollars on that boat. I kept it for like a year. Nobody hardly ever has that happen. I knew that was God. You buy a boat, you go broke, man. That's what happens. So anyway, that's another story. But anyway, so I, I scaled back because I wasn't boating a lot. I bought this used boat. It was nice, Carolina Skiff, Yamaha, a trailer. It was decent, a little older. I've had it for about eight months. And I was, the other day, pulling my boat out down there at Indian Mound Park, and I come back by the house. Mitch is with me in joy, and I pull into my driveway, or pulling down the next road, and my axle breaks. You ever had a boat and your axle broke? Brother, that ain't no fun, is it? Especially when it's a heavy boat. I mean, how you do, how you, what you going to do now? You can't put a spare on, can you? No, because you ain't got no hub. Your axle just broke. Now, here's the point. Somebody neglected that trailer. Amen? So it had bearing buddies on it. You know what that means? You can take your grease gun and squirt grease in it. And it'll help it, man. It'll make it last a long time. But my fault was this. Had I put grease in it for the last nine, ten months? The answer is this. No. I neglected it. So Gary had to work his tail off trying to lift that stupid thing. Nearly killed myself. Okay? And guess what I had to do yesterday? Go buy a new trailer. Okay? And then I had to get that old boat that was heavy off of that trailer and put it on this trailer. That was a job. Here's the point. If you got stuff, take care of it. Say. If you got stuff, take care of it. All right? Take, you'll be surprised how smart you can be, how far you can get along if you take care. It cost me several hundred dollars yesterday, and that was just a used one. Don't neglect stuff. Is that okay? Y'all cool with that or say? How many neglected something before, and it really cost you a lot of money? Let me see your hands. There you go. What I'm saying is this stuff isn't rocket science. It's the Bible, though. This is godly principles on how you can be smart with your money. Let's finish now with what Jesus said. I'm done. I've kept you. Thank you. Here we go. Let's listen to Jesus, and we're done. Luke 12, and he spoke a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. He thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. He could have given them away, couldn't he? Got no room for everything I got. And he said, This will I do. I'll, I'll pull down my barns. I'll build bigger barns. And there I will bestow all my fruits and all my goods and all these big barns. Verse 19. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Say it with me. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But, verse 20, God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of you. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Are you hearing me? Money smarts. Jesus talked a lot about it. A couple other verses and we're done. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say it with me. That though he was, yet for your sakes he became, that you through his poverty might be rich. If you think it's costing you something, to give, to help people, to reach out. It's not costing you a whole lot. Think about what it cost him. The God of heaven became poor for us so that we could be rich, man. Look, Hebrews 2.9. We see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. He was crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God, say it with me, should taste death for every man. What a Savior we have. The last thing is this, neglect, neglect. 
Hebrews 2, 3. How shall we escape? Say it with me. If we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken of by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. You know what? All I did was neglect my trailer. It cost me a few hundred dollars. I wish I hadn't had to spend it. But we're not talking about your axle breaking. We're talking about if you neglect Jesus Christ, you going headlong into a place called hell. Are you hearing me today say? There's not a reason under the sun why today you couldn't sell, settle that. You could not stop. I mean, hey, we need to quit neglecting in our finances, but big time this morning, we need to quit neglecting that free gift of God that He's given to us. Amen? Why neglect it any longer? Just think it through today. I know we talked about finances, but I want you to think about Christ this morning. Have you neglected that free gift? Have you neglected to trust Him as your Savior? Have you been thinking it's about going to church or about giving your money to the church or wearing pretty clothes to come to church? Is that what it's about? Or is it about Him? Don't neglect Him. Amen? He who was rich became poor for you so that you might be rich. That's why He came today. Amen? Amen? 